Today we're going to dive deep into the realm of nostalgic franchises and take a look at Bucky O'Hare. Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Bucky O'Hare started out as a comic book released in 1978. I'd comment on it, but honestly I couldn't find the thing. Just a few random scans. I hear it was very short-lived, but for some reason about 13 years later they decided to make an animated series about it that was also short-lived. Every time I hear this series come up in conversation, I see people get excited about it, like they remember it like it was something amazing, but honestly ask yourself, how much of this series do you actually remember? I just sat through every episode of this and well, well you'll see. The main plot of the series revolves around a war that takes place in a parallel universe called the Aniverse, which is inhabited by anthropomorphic beings. Ah, uh, I get it. It's a universe of animals. <laughs> That's the joke. Anyway, let's meet our cast. First off, we have Bucky O'Hare himself, our fearless main character and captain of the spaceship The Righteous Indignation. His crew consists of Bruiser, the Beetlejuicean Berserker Baboon. It's quite a mouthful. Who's the team's muscle and seems to have some serious anger issues. I'll crunch him and smudge him and rot him into teeny pieces! A bruiser! And then I'll whop him and stop him! And attention! <gasps> There's Blinky the robot, because no sci fi adventure is complete without a comic relief robot. Oh, misery and wretchedness! Then we got Dead-Eyed Duck. He's voiced by the always, um, loud Scott McNeil. Been too long since old Dead-Eyed Duck got to croak some toadies! Nothing can escape old Dead-Eyed sights now! <laughs> Dead-Eye is kind of like an outer space version of Daffy Duck, except way more badass. I object! This fuckus is getting on me nerves, Bucky me boy! Whoa, guys, guys! Look, I promised myself I'd have at least one episode where someone doesn't get murdered, okay? So just try and get along. <sighs> Tunes. Next we have Jenny, first mate on the ship and some kind of psychic cat creature who comes from a world of, um, other female psychic cat creatures. A planet of nothing but cat girls. It's a weeaboo's paradise! Speaking of nerds, let's meet our last crew member, Willie DeWitt. A boy from our world who's somehow able to perfectly understand alien technology and even constructs devices in his bedroom that are light years ahead of even today's technology. Why hasn't the government found him yet? One of the impossible devices he creates is a proton accelerator that through some sci-fi nonsense creates a portal in his closet leading to the righteous indignation even though they're clearly flying through space. Take that laws of physics! You know, I hear if you reverse the polarity on that device, the portal leads to Narnia. Oh, and we've gotten close to Jenny, I see. Ah, well, uh, just remember, this is a kid's show, guys. Okay, time to play a new game I like to call, How Many Things Are Wrong With What We Just Saw? It's a working title. Okay, ignoring the whole furry issue here, first of all, you just met. This literally happens shortly after Willy first arrives in their universe. How about getting to know each other first? Rushing into things like this can ruin a relationship. Secondly, you're in the middle of an attack right now. Is this really the time to be hooking up? Sex with animals. There's no time, man. But the biggest issue here is he's a boy. I couldn't find out what Willy's exact age is supposed to be, but he's got to be what? 11, 12? I don't know how things work in the universe, but back on Earth, this is a felony. And that's your cue, Mr. Hansen! Why don't you take a seat, right over there. So anyway, as I said before, there's a war going on. We've already met our main cast of good guys, but who are the bad guys? Well, our antagonists are known as the Toad Empire. That's right, the Toad Empire. Scourge of the universe. Conquerors of galaxies. Pillagers of countless worlds. Destroyers of great civilizations! The foul virus that plagues the universe! The Toads! Seriously? These idiots conquered the universe? These morons couldn't conquer Mo, Larry, and Curly. 
Oh, they're ruled by some supercomputer called Complex that gives them all their weapons and technology? So what? This isn't Skynet, it's Frogger on steroids! Not to mention the fact that the Toads are stupid! And they're cowards! It begs the question, how did these guys take over? The opposing side has badass rabbits, psychic cats, trigger-happy ducks, and gorillas with rage issues. What happened? What happened? I tried to go into detail about this series, but it only lasted about 13 episodes, so nothing really significant happened. There was little character development, and some of the plot devices felt forced or just cliched. Someone would get captured, or some planet needs to be saved, etc. But you know what's really weird? Despite everything, this series kinda, sorta had an ending. Very rarely do animated series with a solid storyline have an ending. Usually they just peter out or get cancelled before reaching some kind of conclusion. Oh, but not Bucky O'Hare. Here's what happened at the end. After a long, complicated chain of events, Bucky decides to take out the Toads once and for all. But uh-oh, here comes Complex, about to engage in battle for the very first time. Epic battle time! You're too slow, Rust Bucket! What, that's it? The most advanced artificial intelligence in the universe is defeated by getting unplugged? Bullsh! Man, that's it. I can't talk about this anymore. It pisses me off too much. So in conclusion, we have a comic book I can't find, a cartoon that didn't age well, and a line of action figures that I'm pretty sure even the most hardcore collector didn't keep. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, is there anything we can salvage from this franchise? Yes, there is. Bucky O'Hare on the NES. And because I like you guys, I'm going to do a very special bonus review for you. So please meet me on that side of the wall unit. This looks familiar. Oh, uh, Bucky O'Hare on the NES. As it turns out, this cartridge is actually kind of rare. Huh. Lucky me, right? <laughs> uh, Alright, let's go play it. The story is the Toads captured Blinky, Deadeye, Jenny, and Willy, and Bucky has to go rescue them. They're each held on four separate planets, and after you rescue each member, they join your party. During gameplay, you can switch between them, and they each have their own special abilities. Bucky can shoot in several directions and jump really high. Blinky has a jetpack and can break through blocks. Willy uses a charged up laser. Jenny uses the spirit bomb from Dragon Ball Z. And Deadeye's gun can shoot in three different directions, and he can also cling to walls. You know, like a duck. But oddly enough, no bruiser. Hey bruiser, do you know you're not in the video game? So, someone get him a banana! So after you rescue everyone, get this, they get captured again. The Toads brainwash them and you have to go fight them to get them back. At least they give you Blinky to help out. Then after you get everyone back, you go on to fight the rest of the Toads. This game was made by Konami, and while I was playing, I started to pick up on references to other Konami games. The use of multiple characters is reminiscent of Castlevania 3. If you listen closely, you can hear sound effects from Contra. Oh, and does this look familiar? Ever play Life Force? Very rarely do TV licensed games turn out to be better than their source material. Overall, this is a very fun game. You should definitely check it out if you get the chance. But I do have one complaint. It's fucking hard! Damn it! Crap! Oh my god! The challenge level of this game ranges from tedious and annoying to nail-bitingly intense. Enemies do very little damage, but there are so many level hazards that you can die instantly. If I may borrow a line from Lord Cat... <clears throat> you're gonna die. A lot. Seriously, I'd rank this game up there with Battletoads in terms of difficulty. But the good thing is you get unlimited continues, so with some patience and perseverance you can get through it. Yes! Yes! For the mammals! <laughs>